Hello, Vladink here with a new tutorial. Yesterday we analyzed a steel cantilever beam with a load acting on the free end while the beam was modeled as solid 3D. Today we will um, do the same exercise but the beam will be modeled as a 2D wire element with a beam type cross section. We will use the same IP200 beam as last time, as you see here in um, yellow, the dimensions of the cross section that looks like this. The link to this page will be as well in the description, so you can consult it afterwards. Going in Abacus, we start this time by creating our profile, so double click profiles. Here we name our profile. IPE 200 profile and it's I type and click continue. Now we have the height of the beam which is 200 millimeters. We have the, the thickness or the width of the bottom flange which is 100 millimeters. The thickness of the top flange which is again 100 millimeters. Uh, sorry, the width of the top flange, which is again 100 millimeters, the thickness of the um, bottom flange, which is uh, 8.5 millimeters, the thickness of the top flange is again 8.5 millimeters, and the thickness of the web is 5.6 millimeters. Okay, so a um, small remark again, 1 inch equals 25.4 millimeters and click OK. Now having our profile we go to define our section. So double click on sections and um, we write here beam cross section. But now instead of a solid we will choose uh, the beam type and here select beam 2 because uh, the truss elements don't uh, undertake any bending only actual loads so we want the beam type and click continue here of course you have to choose the material and the profile name but we haven't defined our material yet so we have to click cancel and go no and go and define our material double click materials and right here steel s275 okay so general density the density of the steel again we work in newtons millimeters seconds so the mass density has to be expressed in tons per cubic millimeter which will be 7.85 10 power minus 9 tons per cubic millimeters which is the equivalent to 7850 kilograms per cubic meter all right, then going to mechanical elasticity, elastic. The Young's modulus is two hundred and ten thousand megapascals, right? And uh, the Poisson ratio is zero point three megapascals is newton per square millimeter. So it's easy to work in megapascals if you are choosing these units as being newtons and millimeters. Then we go to mechanical plasticity and uh, plastic. Yield stress will be 275 megapascals for the start of the yielding plateau. So uh, zero plastic strain for that point. And now we can click OK. And go back to sections. Double click sections and name our section beam cross section. Choose the beam type and click continue. Here now we have by default the material steel S275 because it's the only material that we have defined. So it's just there and the profile name as well, IP200 profile. Here we are asked to define again in the beam section edit box the sections Poisson's ratio. And as you saw we defined the Poisson's ratio of steel in the material box. But now we are asked to define it again, and um, 
I will leave it zero like th like that. So um, write in the comment box below. What do you think? What what's the difference uh, of the Poisson's ratio here and the Poisson's ratio in the material? Which one does Abacus use? Right. So I will just leave zero here and. Um, I will go for the one uh, in the materials to be the one that Abacus uses. And then I will click uh, OK. Next step is to create our part. So double click on parts. And here is a cantilever beam. And it's 2D planner this time. And wire. And click continue. In this um, grid box, we just uh, click the Create Lines Connected tool and uh, click on any two horizontal points. Or maybe not on any two horizontal points. Maybe click Escape and um, click again on the tool Create Lines Connected. Click on the center of the system and then somewhere to the right. So um, in this way, just middle click for uh, ending the command. And in this way, maybe we will avoid translating the, the beam in the center of a system of coordinates when we will create our instance. So if we can do it from here, better do it right now. And now we will dimension it. So we will click this tool uh, over here, add dimension. Click the first point, click the last point, and click somewhere outside. And right here, 2,000. So the length of the beam will be 2 meters. Now you can click the middle click again and then click done and you see here uh, we have our part now we can uh, uh, we can just uh, expand this part and expand this cantilever beam section as well and double click on uh, on section assignments we select our beam and click done and now we can uh, tell abacus that uh, our part our beam has the beam cross-section that we have defined. The type is beam and the material is steel S275. And click OK. So again, just to review, we created our profile, then we defined the materials, then we created our section, which has the profile and the materials that we, ha we have defined. Yes. And then we went to the parts and we created our the geometry of our element and we implemented the section assignments that we wanted. Very well. To proceed right now, we uh, are going to to assign a beam orientation. So um, we are go going to click this tool here, assign beam orientation, and select the whole beam. Then click done, and just accept the default by clicking enter or hitting enter. Click OK to confirm input. So we click OK to that. Now we can start creating our instances, or our instance. Better said, we um, go to assembly and um, expand this. Double click instances and uh, just choose here independent mesh on instance and cantilever beam and click OK. And we see here we have our instance and indeed the end of the beam is in the center of the system of coordinates, so no need to move it there. All right. Now we can um, we can apply the boundary conditions. So double click on BC, and um, we can name it embedded end. All right, and uh, it's symmetry anti symmetry anchor straight type, and click continue. And now we select this point here, the ending point, the center of the system of coordinates, and click Done. And select Encastre and OK. Yes, and right now we, we have it right, the boundary conditions. Next, we have to create our loading step, because Abacus has a, a predefined initial step, but you have to create the loading steps yourself. And I said steps, not sets. So we go to Steps. Okay, we can um, expand it and then double click steps and create our loading step. It's static general and we can click continue. The time period 
we leave it as it is here one second and in the incrementation we make it fix and we write the increment size of 0 0.05 millimeters 0 0.05 seconds excuse me so uh, it will be divided in uh, 20 steps the um, loading and each step will be equal to 0 0.05 seconds and click OK now we can apply our load so we double click loads and we write here point load and this is a concentrated force so it's the first one here make sure you select the right step so it's the loading step and uh, now we, we can click continue and select the end of the beam and click done right and you see here because we have a 2d element we only have two directions on which we can apply the load and in our case is the y direction so uh, direction 2 and here we write minus 30,000 because we assume that we place a weight that weighs 3 tons at the end of the beam so uh, 3 tons is 3,000 kilograms and 3,000 kilograms will unload a force of 30,000 newtons and we use again newtons here and we write here 30,000 very well so we can click OK right now and we can see a small arrow which indicates the point and the direction of our load well done now we can um, we can mesh our instance and we go to the mesh model right here we go to mesh element type and we make sure that here we have a beam selected and uh, click OK then we go to seed and instance <coughs> approximate global size we will um, we will just leave it, leave it here 200 as it is so um, the beam will be divided into 10 beam elements OK and mesh instance yes and now we finally mesh it and we can see the numbers here because it was alright we click view and uh, assembly display options and you have this two box here with um, node labels and element labels alright so everything is fine right now and um, we don't need for the moment to see the, the labels so we can we click apply and ok but we are sure that we have the mesh so this is how you make sure when you have a wire element that you have the mesh so we go you go to to view and um, assembly display options you go to mesh right here and uh, show node labels show element labels and you make sure that you have meshed your um, element and now click OK now we can just start running the analysis but uh, before that we can just um, um, go to file and set work directory and here just uh, select the folder where you want to have your file saved so you just make sure that uh, Abacus will not save the um, analysis file um, there will be a couple of files in the analysis folder and make sure you save them where you want to not have them scattered, scattered around your computer so just click OK to the selected folder and uh, OK again and now we can go to jobs and uh, double click it and uh, right now we can uh, we can name this beam underscore analysis and continue we can just uh, accept everything as it is and click uh, OK so now we see the job here if we expand it and we right click it and click submit we see here now that the job is submitted and now that uh, our job beam analysis is uh, running and we are uh, waiting right now for the job to be completed and uh, view some results and there it is right now it is um, completed so we can uh, right click and um, results yes and the thing is that you can um, 
click this button here plot deformed shape mm, yes and then you go to view ODB display options and here you go to you are going to render beam profiles and click apply you can see the beam in the render mode so as it looks in reality but the thing is that you can only do that if you are in the in the undeformed state this one or the deformed state which is this one here plot deformed shape but if you go to the contours plot contours on deformed shape then you get this uh, warning that the basic plot option renders beam profiles render beam profiles is supported only in deformed or undeformed plot modes so you cannot see that and it's quite logical because you don't abacus doesn't calculate um, normal stresses along the cross section because there is no cross section it's just um, uh, it's just a 1d element and the render beam profiles like that and now we can click the deformed contour and we can see some for misses stresses like usually we go to viewport viewport annotation options and go to legend set font and we make it 12 here for everything and click OK so now we can actually see something and we have our beam we can see that we have uh, 20 frames so one second 0 0.05 seconds per step alright this is the box where you can check the frame frame selector yes close it and um, you can see that uh, the beam actually yielded at the support here the stress is uh, 275 megapascals the full misses stress it's not much to say studying the normal stress because um, as I said the normal stress varies along the cross section so um, maybe uh, this way of modeling wire is better to use if you are interested in the phonemesis stress and the deformations so phonemesis stress is here um, which seem to be equal so we have the maximum 275 megapascal so yielding in the support and uh, the other end we have um, 16 megapascals and if we go to S11 it's basically the same thing yes so um, it's the von Mises stress that matter and now we uh, or that we can interpret and now we go to um, to see some deformation so we click U and uh, U2 and we see that we have a, of course a zero, dis zero displacement in the support and then at the other end we have a displacement of um, 25 uh, 25 millimeters so 2.54 centimeters alright so now we can just uh, click OK we can see some um, let's go back to see the phone misses stresses and click this um, animate time history and um, click this box here and make it swing and then apply so now it swings, it doesn't go only up, down, and then resetting it up, down again, but uh, instead it's uh, doing a full cycle. Um, and uh, yes, that was uh, all for now. As I said yesterday, I analyzed the same structural system modeled in a different way, so uh, you are welcome to check it links in the description thank you for watching this tutorial don't forget to connect with me on linkedin and facebook links are also in the description thumbs up this video if you liked it leave a comment and uh, subscribe for more content this is blood Inc. good luck in engineering and i'll see you next time